You guys are going to the Nick tomorrow, right? Yeah. Well, I'm not very close. I will. I will. Yeah. That's my dad's family. That's where you work. Tomorrow got my last night. Um, you'll, you'll see my door, so maybe I can all you know, like, oh, He's completely on. covered the entire door. Okay. So, yeah, I'll definitely have it. I think if you guys are on a tour, they always stop by our door. Yeah, I love it. You're going to have to ask them to move so your door exactly. someday because yeah. Yeah. so many people stop and run. What would you two suggest for, like, we've, we've talked a little bit with the other guys about getting your foot in the door and, like, trying to figure out how to, like, make it. We live in Utah, away from the main center. Oh, I'll, I'll just run into someone. Yeah, you can't. I can't just run into whoever we're here. What would you suggest on getting it out? I don't know. Make good stuff. Yeah. Still, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, it sounds overly simplified, but that's what's um, make undeniably good stuff or reach for that. I mean, we didn't know he, anybody. He did characters for like, was it 10 years or 7 years? 9 years, yeah. Yeah, before he even made it out here. And he drew like tons of cartoons and comics before that too. So when he got out here, he wasn't desperate to get a job. Oh, well, he was desperate, but like... It wasn't, he had the skills to back it up. He, it wasn't like somebody was doing him a favor to give him a job. He actually had the chops. Whereas if you if you get out here and you, you sneak into a job or something and you don't have the skills to back it up, you're just going to like regret it. <laughs> you're going to be like stressed out about it. Like Will's from Texas. I'm from San Diego. Even though San Diego is like two hours away, it, could, it might as well be Utah. You know, it's good that you're like in this big group of people because some them will get in, and your friends will get in, and those are your peers in the industry, and they're going to keep working for the rest of your life, and so you've got these connections, okay. they're like, hey, can you, hey, since you got in, can I like, come have lunch with you, and just ask questions, you know? Like, I, I, for almost four years before I got hired, I would come visit him at the and they're like, hey, can I see all your storyboards? And like, oh. I didn't realize how annoying that must have been, but... <laughs> but I did that, like, every, I would come out from Texas, like, twice a year sometimes, and they'd be like, show me everything, and then, and I got a feel for what it actually looked like instead of what I thought it looked like in my head. Uh, and so, once I finally got out here, I kind of knew what to expect. I had a better feel for it instead of like this big amorphous blob of like, oh, well, it's, it's so much to overcome. You know? But then I also had years and years of uh, people sketching at Walmart and in the mall. And, like, so I, I had a lot of skills to bring to the table, plus doing comic books. So there's a lot you can do where you're at now to develop your skills. So once you get out here, uh, you're not just starting from scratch. <laughs> Hey, so I got a weird question for you. So, what is the competition in the industry like right now? Like, because I mean, I, I see a lot more people like this now than probably there was a couple years ago. Like, is it do you know if it's any different or it's harder to get a job? Yeah. So here's the thing: it is really, 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 really hard to get to the level that you get hired. Once you get to that level, it's fairly easy to keep getting work. So it's you don't think about it as competition with other people in the room. Think about it. Think about it as getting up to your fullest potential, and then you become like Brian, where people like try and steal him all the time from other studios. They're like, they're like, we want you over here. No, we want you over here. Here, take all our money. You know, you want to be that good, and that way you're not competing with anybody. They're coming to you. Uh, and so, yeah, getting those first jobs, it, it's pretty like there is a lot of competition because there's tons. Everybody says they want to do it, but the ones that really, really succeed, it's like it just comes out of them. It's like they're breathing. It's like inside them. It just comes out funny. It's cartoon. So you want to be that person. So whatever it takes to get those skills, that, like you don't have to think about it so much. You're just like expressing yourself creatively through animation or through storyboarding or character design. Like even when I'm doing character design or prop design, I'm still trying to tell a story. And that's what 
that makes my stuff you think, you know, different from somebody that's just trying to get in. Like, I'm not just trying to demonstrate that I do uh, uh, design a chair or design a door or something. I'm trying to design this character's door versus this other character's chair or whatever. Something has meaning. Yeah, and that's a good, that's a good exercise is if you're going to design a cup. Design ten cups, and each cup has its own personality for a different character. And that's just one example. You can do that with everything, from costumes to weapons to houses, or you know. Does that make sense? Yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. How long have you worked on SpongeBob? I've been on SpongeBob for a year and a half, but I've worked at Nickelodeon for. This is my seventh year, sixth year. The ending was fine. Started in 2010. We found What's your like, the board, uh, me and the board uh, favorite project? That you've we found like both 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 Mine is YouTube. Yeah. Yeah. So you vlog? Huh? Yeah. You vlog or? Yeah, 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 yeah. Is that what this is? Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to subscribe to you then right away. Oh, that's why there's. Yeah. I was like, no way, Dad. What's your YouTube? It's uh, youtube.com slash so Will Terrell. Well, right it's now. like Will Terrell with the T. <laughs> yeah, I usually have a cameraman for when I eat. I just like oh, <laughs> being on camera. Uh, yeah. 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 Just, just expect every meal to be filmed. Wait, are you live right now? Oh, okay, no. never mind. <laughs> I need to be able to edit it. In case you guys like start cussing. It's going to be I'm just kidding. <laughs> I have a question. So these are super like characterized, and, like very. There's a lot of personality and like each drawing. How, how do you see that? Because I, I see certain people, I just see like their face. But this guy has a huge chin, like beautiful characteristics. How do you get to that? Do you ever take pictures of people too? Uh, I do sometimes, yeah, yeah, for reference. Um, the thing is, you have to do it enough so that you get bored of doing it the same way. Oh, I see. Over and over. It be, so it's like, when you first start off, like the first 10,000 people you draw, right? Just trying to draw it, make it look real. And that's why it's so hard, is because everybody, even if they're not an artist, can tell that a person doesn't look real, doesn't look right. There's something off about it. So your first, like, 10,000 drawings of people, are gonna be like, uh, you know. And then once you get to that point, you're like, you know, I'm tired of drawing people sitting the same pose or whatever, and you start like, I'm gonna push it, I'm gonna exaggerate it, I'm gonna, you know, take it to the extreme. And that's, it starts to become play at that point. Also, like, just speaking from a character, point of view. Yeah. It's like you're just seeing what's big and making it bigger or small, making it smaller. If something's far apart, you can make it further apart. Yeah. You know, it's just and you're also kind of drawing the feeling of that person. Uh, Alec Baldwin doing Donald Trump. That's not a good Al that's not a good Donald Trump impression. But it feels like Donald Trump. Yeah. It's like a character of the artist just like certain features. Just kind of a good character feels more like the person than the person does. So you can see a photograph of like George Bush or Obama or Trump. And then you see a caricature of it and it actually looks more like them than the photograph. Yeah. Because with the caricature, it's more uh, capturing the display of their personality instead of just what they look like. Yeah, and it's not necessarily making fun of them, it's just exaggerating what makes them who they are to a, another degree. Uh, so what do you do to keep yourself sane while working on like a frustrating project? <laughs> <laughs> that, that's becoming a professional. You just gotta do it. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. Because I'm working on on, on an animation right now. Where? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, so I I suck at walk cycles, but I decided to do a deer animation. That was the worst mistake of my life. And I'm, and I'm too far ahead to quit now. My teacher might yell at me too. But like, I'm, I'm trying to like push myself to keep on working at it. But oftentimes I find myself wanting to give up. Yeah. I mean, if you think of it like a this problem you're tackling right now is like a bubble, and this is how much you're capable of doing is inside of this little bubble. The problem you want is just outside of that bubble. Once you finally like tackle that part, it's like whoop, the bubble just got bigger. That's what you're capable of now. And then you got another problem up here. Oh, bloop. 
now I can do this much, now I can do this much, you know, and it just keeps going. So it's hard while you're doing it, but you look back on it, you got so many more skills in the long run because of it. Practice. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think you just have to, like, just push through and, like, just keep hitting it. Because if that was a job, like, you can quit now. Like, you could just put that aside and do something easier. But if it was a job, you couldn't do that. Like, well, I decided we shouldn't have a deer in this show. Um, or at least he shouldn't walk. He actually floats. So, so it's like, I've been in situations working on something. I'm like, this is not working, and I just have to keep hitting it until it works and just keep going back to it to the point of like well it was a good run I'm, i'll be fired but, uh, <laughs> uh, at least that you know so it's just like keep hitting it keep hitting it because i have no choice and there's a deadline also quick and so it's like and then all of a sudden it, something breaks and it was like that works and like it finally you'll, you'll hit like an apex of go down the other side of the hill. That feeling doesn't ever go away. Okay. No, yeah. It's not like we've... A lot of I still feel like I'm going to be fired every day. We haven't gotten to some <laughs> threshold right now where these superhumans, it's like we're just, and everyone at these studios are just you guys maybe a little older, yeah. more experienced, more whatever. And I've, I've rarely met anybody that still doesn't feel like, oh, I'm going to be fired today. But you, the thing is, you get used to the feeling after a while. You're like, this is just normal. And if I do get fired, somebody else will hire me or, you know, I'll just take a vacation for a while. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't matter how good you get. I keep good meaning to do a comic about the process of storyboarding an episode or something. Uh, because it seems to be the same thing every cycle of starting out. Like, this is going to be, that's it. I'm going to make the funniest episode this time. And, uh, do, I have all these high hopes, and then I get into it, and I'm like, I can't, uh, like, it's too much, and then, and then it's like, nothing's coming to me, and then, well, time to move town, I uh, can't do this anymore, uh, and then something comes together, and then I pitch it, and everyone loves it, and then, well, not me, sorry. Oh. <laughs> but you're welcome. <laughs> so, how often... Do you think you would spend on a storyboard depending on the Personally, I have four weeks to make an 11 minute episode. Wait, a full episode? Yeah. Oh, storyboard. Wow. Storyboard. You're working with others, though, correct? No. no? Oh. I get a script on Monday. Other people do the characters on the props. Not always, though. Like a new character, I'm designing it. A new uh, location, I'm designing it. So, um, on a Monday, I get a script. We all read through it, um, and then we just I just go. And no one bothers me for four weeks. No one comes up and says, "How are you doing?" or "Let me see this." It's just like uh, four weeks to do it. And on Friday, four weeks later, I turn it in. Probably Monday, five weeks later. But it's, um, and then I take it. But he's had a lot of people help him along the way to get to where he can do that. Now. It's not something you jump right into. <laughs> There's, you know, storyboard revisionist jobs where you can. That's where I started. Where you're revising, you're learning the basics, and you're, it's still a lot of work. Uh, but you're learning from people and you're like figuring it out and then diving into actually the board and different lines. What's your guys' Jordan Academy? I have a question. How long does it take to do a finished illustration? One of these? Yeah, it's like, how long should it take? Because I kind of do really fast stuff. But I know I should be working like a lot longer after all. It takes as long as it takes. Okay. Yep. Um, I, I would suggest that if you're not happy with your illustrations, slow down okay. and like uh, take twice as long as you think it takes. Okay. Uh, but if you're taking way too long, then you need to cut some stuff out because more detail doesn't necessarily make a better illustration. Yeah. Did you already see this? What was that? Like oh, no. Oh, no, 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 no,
<laughs> Let me preview this. We have <laughs> on. I don't know if this is uh, uh, just Sharpie pens. They're a little uh, minor point. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yep. This is crap. This is your one. Yeah. It's not as exciting as Will's. I don't color and get all fancy and stuff. You've got like the like blue style. It takes so much skill to get this loose and to be this efficient. Um, what are your guys' views on like college readiness? Like we're not. Uh, some of us can't afford to go to uh, Cal Arts. He, he didn't go to anime. I went to Cal Arts F on a tour. <laughs> 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 I visited a friend at Cal Arts. Um, but, yeah. No, no art director is going to ask for your degree. That's what you're asking. You go to art school for to have a peer group. They are going to go into the industry because people that work in Cal Arts they give each other jobs for the rest of their careers. And so that's really important. And they do teach you a lot. They give so you a lot of skills. Go hang around Cal Arts and make some friends. <laughs> but it's that's not yeah. the only way in. What I go back to the thing we said at the beginning, which was. You just have to be really, really, really good. And then people don't ask questions. I, they don't care how you got there. They just, they're just glad that you're working for them. I've seen a lot of people um, try to, um, it's almost as if they're waiting for permission to be better. So it's like, once I get into college, then they'll teach me how to do this or that, and I'll figure it out. It's like that. Or you could just take that into your own hands and go. So my plan is to go to a, is, is to go to a community college and just get my journals out of the way and then go to a, like a high ridge university like University of Utah. Their EAE program which is uh, like animation and, uh, and like because I want to have like a good like 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 I've been in college. I'm I'm an adult now. I've been to the school. Adult like, now. <laughs> That's not the way to go if I'm already good enough. Like, should I waste thousands of dollars? Don't. I can tell you nothing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's too much like, pressure. If you want my path to get a job, uh, like, I just want to get be a job. born with my parents. Uh, get the job I had when I was 20. Work really hard. Uh, run into this person or that. Like, my path is so specific and Will's path is so specific. It doesn't. It's not like. Uh, if you really want it, nothing's going to stop. Yeah. Like, I want to work. In the video game department. Yes. And I know they only hire like A list animators and stuff, so I'm kind of worried. Everyone starts somewhere. You just gotta keep doing it to get better. Like, she is one of my inspirations. Yeah, you're amazing. I'm a low poly artist. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm a small YouTube animator. Uh, and I think. What's your channel? Uh, uh, what's your channel? It, my channel is. I can pull it up if you want. No, please don't. My channel is Swift Chaos with a K. Uh, I think I just hit 10,000 subscribers a little bit ago. And I do. <laughs> I do. Uh, I do uh, animations. Uh, some stuff are original, and I also do a lot of fandom related stuff. But I believe one of my most, one of the projects I'm probably proudest of was I did a animation that was called Kill the Queen, which was for the Digital Media Arts Festival. And I managed to get third place in the competition. And I lost first place to this one person who had who, whose animation was like fully colored oh, wow. and shaded, and it was great. But they're not in school anymore, so now I have a chance. <laughs> so I'm definitely gonna try. They and screwed up by graduating. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna try. I'm working on the sec the second uh, part that is gonna be a continuation of that animation, and I'm gonna put it into this year's competition. And I'm hoping for the best with that one. I'm probably gonna get third because your animation looks really. It's really, really good. It's, yeah, yeah. Well, I heard it's like the state championships. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I don't know. It's state championships for high school animators. Nobody says deer, 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 not deers. What, I, what I, I can make him a cripple and just have him limp on two legs. Oh, Roll, that poor deer. Roller blades. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Ice right. skating. Deer on roller blades. Okay, with you, how did you, like, 
You have like a really fluid, cool style that I really love. Um, how did you like get to that level? Because I know not a lot of people have like similar art style in a way. So I really like. Um, I think it was. I mean, first of all, literally years because yeah. I tracked it. Like, I mean, specifically what you're talking about, like. Um, There's a moment where it went cool. like it just like became a different. Order. Where I would draw with, um, I don't know, like I used to do sketches with ballpoint pens, right? And they were a little more structured and a little more like not as loose. And as I did more and more and more and more of those. Uh, my brain was working faster than the ballpoint pen could draw. Because the ballpoint pen on paper is a little slower, depending on the tooth of the paper. So then I moved up, I got a different pen, like a, like a felt pen. So it's like faster and then... I realized that I could draw a really loose, crazy sketch and then try to ink it, and it would lose all life. Um, so I was like, how can I get those two together where it's still like a coherent drawing but it's still got all this life to it and it was just experimenting with different pens that move faster and faster and faster and faster and faster, and faster, and faster right? and so it's actually like the equipment so equipment but it also has to match your head right. and your, you know, it's just I mean we used to go out and sketch all the time I had other friends in San Diego a lot of artists down there, and we all go out and sketch every Sunday at least. Life drawing every Wednesday morning, just like an adult class, and uh, just over and over and over and over and over. And there would be like these kind of plateaus, and then all of a sudden, like, bloop, and then, bloop, and then like, uh, I don't know, 2009, I feel like I felt like the biggest bloop, and then in 2010, I got a job. And suddenly, people are like, How'd you get so good? And you're like, what? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what changed between yesterday and today? <laughs> yeah. Except you're eating tiny, tiny bites of mushrooms in the course of six years. And then all of a sudden you're like, oh, what's that from these turtles? It's like Alice in Wonderland. Yeah. <laughs> For sure, Mario. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> oh, sorry, did you get that? Let's do that again. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder, at least, if you can't see, you don't have to animate the deer. Yeah, okay. What, do you, what do you specifically do? Huh? What do you specifically do? Like, what are you working on? Um, oh, okay. Is it top secret? Yeah, top secret. Or, and this is top secret. Okay, I do prop design to character designs okay. at Warner Brothers. Oh, uh, Warner Brothers. Oh, okay. Yeah. I would say, you know, not my favorite. Yeah. And that's really cool. YouTube channel. And I do YouTube. Yeah. Well, I'll follow you. Yeah. That's what this school show of Suicide Squad. <laughs> <laughs> Animated. Oh, wait. <laughs> what is it? Just a bunch of preschoolers find like a bucket of paint and like rub it all over themselves? <laughs> Suicide kids. <laughs> <laughs> also, I think I just ask, what do you use to color your drawings? Most of those are just like red or blue colored pencil and uh, uh, Prismacolor marker. Occasionally I use Occasionally I use Wash. Yeah, and some of those are painted. Yeah. They just look really well blended together. And I know you can't get that with like the cheap dollar store markers because those are just gonna bleed through all of your pages. I mean, the Prisma colors still bleed through, but the uh, yeah, cheap dollar store markers. Yeah, that's why you like they don't really sleep the back there. That's why I, I feel like a piece of paper. Yeah, right I use here. a clean sheet in between the two. Yep. What other projects have you worked on? Uh, I worked on Lava, which is a bunch of my series. Uh, the last project I was on was Jetsons Meet the WWE. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, and I worked on a Scooby Doo movie that uh, just came out on TV. It's called Shaggy Showdown. Do you ever go watch anything that after you spent forever making it, do you ever go watch it? Yeah, because it's a completely different thing once it's finished. <laughs> I would recognize the things. <laughs> I've only been working in animation for about a year and a half or two years. Before that, I did comic books for 15 years. 
comics and YouTube. Are you guys doing characters or have you seen your sketchbooks or online? It's like scenes, I guess. Like PDFs, right? I, yeah, well, I've seen that in the past a couple yeah. of years. <laughs> yeah, I have a whole bunch of videos. Oh, nice. Yeah. When did you first start watching my channel? Uh, two years ago. Two years? Yeah. It's been, like been it's been super helpful, actually. I switched over to a darker um, or sketch book. Yeah, exactly. I really like that, and I really like the way that you just draw. It's just it's inspiring. I love it. How about you? You said you've been uh, Yeah, about like two years, and like your channel really has helped me. Oh, yeah. Wow, so. Uh, like, just like, like, I've watched like your videos, like, uh, like you had the one like how to make appealing characters and, like just the way you're saying like you have to have a story going on like that really helped me like trying to come up with like better characters like oh what if it like this happens to this instead of just like oh here's a guy that's awesome yeah. <laughs> that's always cool to hear so, would you mind signing this oh sure <laughs> sorry no 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 problem so it's not like Richard Williams <laughs> Just like uh, second page, sorry about that. Yeah, sure. Sorry, I know you guys are gonna sign a lot of stuff. No, the writers break it up. Like, because it was so big. Yeah, I was a teenager. I bought one of those at that bookstore. I wanted to get it, but I was like, no, I should save money because Disneyland's expensive. Wait, what bookstore had this? It was the Gnome. No, yeah. Oh, they had the school that we toured. They had a bookstore, and they had copies of that, and I was like. I should get it. That's everyone. I know, but now after this, I won't be able to get it. <laughs> oh. Which would have been so cool. Oh my God. Yeah, I just there's had to just like, find you right until you get one. So, do you write down the details before you before you start designing a character? Thank you. No. I mean, you. <laughs> uh, I, mean I, I did there because I'm trying to like, figure something out. I made a short a few years ago, and, um, and then it, I made a pilot with Nickelodeon for it, and it got kind of close to becoming a show. But, uh, it it's, called, it's called Ear Mouse and Bottle. Ear? Ear Mouse and Bottle. Ear okay. Mouse and Bottle. Ear Mouse and Bottle. Ear was thrown on his back. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's really funny. <laughs> now I'm trying to come up with, they want to see other stuff. So. so, what is the process of getting something from being just a pilot to an actual show? It's like a box of puzzles that you have to to <laughs> that it is something that is completely out of our control. Like, completely. Like, the only thing I have control over, you have control over, is to make the best thing possible and put it out there. And then is it based on, like, the reviews that it gets back after it's been shown, or...? No, because they don't show it. So it's, it's literally out of your hands as... Because if it was reviews, well, you made the best thing possible. You should get some great reviews, right? If you can make that good of thing. But uh, it's all business, money, New so, York network decisions, yeah, so it's um, more like in the demographics, end. like which direction the company is going. Like all of that is completely out of your control. And okay. you can, the only thing you do is make the funniest thing. Sounds like we're heading into job insecurity. <laughs> no, I mean this is, but this is like, oh, they get hundreds of pitches, right? They buy up a few of them to develop, and out of those, very few of them get made into a pilot. Maybe four a year, maybe three, maybe five. Out of those, maybe one or two. We'll get picked up for a show. Yeah, so, so it's like that's like playing the lottery. That's like saying, well, I'm playing this lottery. It looks like I'm in. I don't know if I'll be making money this month. Like, no, you probably won't be making money this month because that's your job is playing the lottery. But that's not your job. That's the side. Let's just shoot for the moon. So, so we should expect not to make much money. You couldn't wear anime and stuff. No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> 
we are super rich. <laughs> <laughs> I rolled up here in a magical unicorn. <laughs> I bought these chips, I might not even eat them. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm drinking free water because I want to. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, sure. Thank you to our Look camera woman. You did a great job. What's your name? Annette. Annette, thank you. Yep. Hey, hang on. Ready? What? Bye! Bye! <laughs>